I got so much trouble on my mind. What up? It's Che from uh, JustPlainTerror.com. I'm here with the one, the only, DJ Wicked. What up, man? Uh, you know, I got a couple questions, man. I know, I know people have been hitting you up like crazy. You can't answer every single question. Right, right. You know, the same questions over and over and over. So I got a couple questions that, I, that I've noticed uh, that, that everybody's been asking. Everybody's been wanting to know. Sure, sure. So uh, if you don't mind answering those. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll touch on what I can touch on. Right, um, right. No, I understand that there's got to be some kind of a, a disclosure disclosure yeah. contract you had to sign. And, yeah, for sure. There's... Um, yeah, about a 45 page uh, <laughs> privacy contract and uh, yeah. yeah, the non-disclosure agreement and all that shit. Um, basically, it's a bunch of stuff, you know, the, the, the show, the production is covering their bases. So people like me don't, you know, you know, come out and say what really happens behind the scenes right. on these shows and expose right. the in info um, or else, you know, they keep on insinuating the threat of you getting, getting right, sued right. or we'll right. sue you for 500,000 we'll sue you for 500,000 it's a right. reoccurring threat that they, they keep on trying to present um, but fuck unfortunately for them <laughs> you know I have nothing I have a $300 right. car right, and right. Uh, you know a pair of used turntables one right. of them's actually got the broken RCAs so that's everything I have to my name so you know you want to sue me for 500,000 you know what I'm saying right, good right. luck with that so, uh, but yeah, man, I'll touch on what I can touch on. Right, no, I feel you. And, and that brings up a point, though, man. The fact that they do that, the fact that they that they are always threatening you to sue, it's almost like we're, we're, we're admitting that we're fake. We're faking this, you know, we're, we're faking this reality shit. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, they're definitely... It's just not that real. Right. I, mean. I can understand you don't want to you don't want to disclose who won the show if you even know. Right, right. But things like, uh, you know, how you were treated... All that you can, you yeah, can discuss, man. and I'm not here to uh, maliciously like I'm not gonna spoil <laughs> the outcome of the show. Uh, you know, I'm not here to to, to ruin the show for people. I, you know, I still have friends that are DJs that are on the show, right. so I'm not trying to fuck it up for them. Um, but at the same time, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak my opinion and my piece on on uh, how the show really went down and and how I was treated and how people were treated in situ situations. Um, I mean, it's a reality show, so right, I'm gonna keep right, it real for right, sure. Right. We wouldn't expect anything less. Okay, so so I think the number one question that most people want to know is why did you even go on this show? I mean, you know, it's like I've seen you turn down, I've seen you turn down big gigs right, just right. on principle. Uh, so wh why did you why did you choose this time to go on this um, show? Um, I mean, for one, it's a, it's a national TV show. The the platform is huge. Um. And like anyone else, man, I was excited, like, oh, you know, shit, this is my opportunity right. to finally right. show people what I do as a DJ, man. So that's, you know, that's pretty exciting. And like I said, it's a huge platform. It's a huge outlet to, to do that. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, come to find out, any thought you might have of you're going to go on the show and do what you do as a DJ is, is thrown out right. the window, man, right. which is the most frustrating and disappointing part of the whole experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we kind of saw that as we as we watched it unfold. Right. Which brings me to another question is what well, what was the process that you had to go through in order to get on the show? Uh, the process I went through, man, was was a it was a little different than, than what most people had to go through. Um, just like everyone else, I flew out to Detroit and auditioned for the show. Mm -hmm. um, brought all vinyl with me. I rocked a you know a two minute set, um, which was being you know, judged by Kid Capri, DJ Revolution, and Rich Medina. Um, so, you know, I, I did my thing, I rocked all wax, and uh, basically, uh, Kid Capri buzzed me after my set. He said, you know, I had let a record play too long or whatever, so he wasn't feeling that, that I let a record play too long, but then uh, DJ Revolution and Rich Medina kind of was like, yo, man, like, that fool, that was dope. Yeah, like, yeah. you're buzzing him, man. You might want to reconsider. Um, so, you know, they kind of like, I don't know, convinced Kid Capri, um, kind of persuaded him to change his mind. And, and, and he was like, okay, yeah, you guys have a point. You know, I'm going to give him his golden ticket. So I walked away from Detroit with, with my golden ticket right. to get on the show or whatever. So, um, you know, a couple weeks after that, they hit me up and was like, 
hey, well, we also want you to be on this uh, People's Champ contest mm -hmm. yeah, to yeah. get on the show. Like, like I got my ticket. Right. Why am I doing this People's Champ contest? Um, you know, no one else had to do that. So it was basically kind of like, you know, you auditioned. We saw you were dope. You got your golden ticket. Like, now we want you to go and, and, and battle 12 other dudes. Um, oh, right, right. And we did see that unfold. We saw that unfold and yeah. it looked unnecessary to me. I mean... Yeah, it, it almost looked offensive. I mean, your competition was, say, you know, yeah, I mean, they weren't up to par, you know. Yeah, you know, the People's Champ contest, just like the actual Master of the Mix show, like, you know, there's a couple of dope DJs, and then there's a couple of DJs that, that really probably don't even belong there. They right. shouldn't be there. Obviously. Um, so yeah, I did the People's Champ thing, um, which was a voting process, which was a whole other nightmare. People, you know fudging their votes and numbers mm -hmm. and it's just a mess anyways at the end of the day you know what i'm saying i prevailed in the people's champ contest right and uh you know got got a you know, 11th position on the show so yeah well, well was that was that position already uh to be filled or do you think that you got that position um kind of spur of the moment because because of your fan base because of the fact that uh, that people were really uh, i mean people were shooting for you uh, before the People's Champ competition, I mean... Yeah, for sure. I think that, I mean, the amount of support that I had uh, from my friends and family right. and fans is pretty undeniable. I mean, it was like yeah. in your face, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a landslide of, of yeah. you know, support Definitely. for me Definitely. in comparison to the other DJs. Okay, so, so you go through the auditioning process, you make it on the show. Once you got on the show, how were you treated? What, what was the living situation? Uh, were you guys in a house? What was the... Uh, no, nah, there's no house. It wasn't like Jersey Shore. Right. Uh, you know, the, the show itself is a traveling show. Um, it goes from, you know, state to state, city to city. Um, there's a new challenge in every city. Mm -hmm. So, uh, basically it's just everyone living on a tour bus. Mm -hmm. Home sweet home. Yeah, home sweet home. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's what I do for a living on right, tours. Right, so, right. to me, it was nothing. Um, you know, it was, it was a new experience for some people, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I do. But, but how were you, how were you, uh... Like, people don't understand, I don't think, reality TV, and, and um, they don't see the behind-the-scenes part of, of everything. They just see they just see what they see on TV and think, that's all it is. I mean, right. everybody's smiling, everybody's drinking Smirnoff, and... Yeah, it's, a uh, yeah, I mean, through the through the power of editing, um, you know, the producers and, the, and, and the, the director and the editor, they can, you know make it seem like they would you know whatever they want it to seem like right um you know they can take uh, a world-class dj and edit it to make them look like an amateur uh -huh. obviously and, and they did that uh, <laughs> in, in some instances so um it's yeah. pretty it's pretty fucked up and you're right the, the average everyday joe schmo viewer at home has no clue yeah. as yeah. to what's going on behind the scenes. And I think that shows too what people say, oh, he's just a sore loser. He's uh, he's speaking out because he got kicked off. Right. I mean, people who know you know that that's not that's exactly. not your style. I mean, exactly. Everyone on online, you know, everyone's got an opinion and everyone's talking out the side of their neck without actually being mm -hmm. knowledgeable mm -hmm. of what happens behind the scenes and on these shows, these reality TV shows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it was, you know, if you pit me against uh, some DJs in real life, mm -hmm. not on TV, mm -hmm. no smoke and mirrors, no gimmicks, real life, mm -hmm. and they prove to be better DJs than me, um, you know, I'll take that loss uh, like a good sport, like mm -hmm. a of fucking, course. like a of champ, course. you know what of I'm course. saying? Of course, that's like, hip hop. That's hip hop. Right, right. Um, but if you pit me uh, against like, Dudes in gold shorts with a whip <laughs> that are doing pre-made mixes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, if you try to pimp me and exploit me and treat me like an amateur and do this shit in a public format on national TV, mm -hmm. like I'm gonna pull your fucking card right. and I'm gonna stand up right. for myself because I'm a stand-up right. dude. Right, and that's hip hop. And that's hip hop. So we saw right. the whole cast. They tried to make it out like this, this melting pot of DJs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some of them were on there looks alone i mean really uh but how do you think you fit in as a dj uh within that cast uh i, I don't think i even f i fit in at all yeah like yeah. i was definitely an outcast um mm -hmm. uh you know i'm the i'm the underground dude 
I'm the vinyl dude. I play at the after hours parties and the smoky bars. Um, on some grimy, you know, raw hip hop shit. Um, no one else in that cast really fit that role. I mean, right, he, right. DJP was a vinyl dude. Yeah. So we have that in common. Um, but yeah, man, uh, as far as that's concerned, I was definitely kind of kind of an outcast. Of, at least I felt like kind of an outcast in that, in that mm-hmm. group. Mm-hmm. Speaking of P, and of course, uh, DJ Total Eclipse, who, who else did you see that was a standout? I mean, that, that's the thing. It's like you, you see somebody like Total Eclipse on that show, you, in, in a, in a, in a, and somebody who's cultured in hip hop thinks that's it. The show's over. You got, you got Total Eclipse on there. I mean, right. I mean, and, and given like DJP and, and Total Eclipse, um, those are my, my personal favorite DJs on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Total Eclipse, you know, he's a, a monster. He's already kind of a legend in his own yeah, life. I, yeah. went, I went onto the show, I'm a Total Eclipse fan. Yeah, yeah. So being like on that same playing field with these dudes, uh, it was something else, man. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But, okay, so. Now, now we're gonna get now. I'm, I'm gonna get raw with you here because there, there actually is something that that I hear uh, maybe more than you do uh, because they, 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 maybe they think that you can't talk about it, um, and that's how you feel about the judges. Uh, would you mind taking a minute and and, uh, and and kind of breaking down your feelings about the these judges? judges? Okay, yeah, let's get into these. Let's judges. start. Let's start with Victor Duplay, who I, I have no fucking idea who that dude is. Uh, Victor Duplay. Um... I don't, I, I don't know. He, he's a, uh, you know, you ask him what kind of DJ he is, you know, he'll tell you, I'm a grown and sexy DJ. So he's a, basically he's a dork. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just, it's not my shit, man. That's what he does. Right, right. Whatever he does, right, let him do him. Right. Um, he was a season one cast member. He didn't win season one, mm, mm. yet he's back to judge the contestants on season two. I found that kind of funny style. Uh, DJ Scratch won last year. Why isn't he back right, right. judging us? Uh, why is the runner-up? I don't want to get judged by the runner-up. Yeah. I want to get yeah. judged by the winner. So, yeah. um, he's not. You know, I'm sure he's a nice enough dude. He seemed cool in person. Um, I don't know. You know, if he's necessarily the right person to be up there judging. Mm-hmm. Especially if, if his whole, if his whole idea of what makes a what makes a DJ DJ is being grown and sexy. Right. And what the fuck does that even mean? Right. I mean everyone has their own style and their own area of expertise that they, you know, they feel they can judge on. Um, I just don't think he was the right dude. Right. Right. No, I feel you. All right, man. Uh, now I got I got my own personal opinion about this one. Okay. Amber Rose. I, I googled Amber Rose uh, last night because I, I don't I thought she was like a stripper. I thought she was like, you know, so, uh, something I didn't right. have no idea. It turns out she's she's somebody's girlfriend. She's Wiz Khalifa's girlfriend. She used to she used to fuck Kanye West or something. Right. It's uh, yeah. It's she she's famous for being famous. Like right. no one really right. knows what she does. Right. Um, apparently she's a model. I guess she's now working on an album. Oh, she's a model. Yeah, she's well. I, I <laughs> fuck man. I have no idea. Right. To tell you the truth. Um, whatever the case, she's up there judging me on my livelihood and, and right on, that's you know that's it's just weird you know her defense the way she states her case is you know i'm judging from the party perspective i go to parties all over the world and you know who fucking cares right i'm a dj and you're judging me right like right. where is spinderella yeah where yeah, is jazzy yeah. joyce where yeah, are the, somebody the judge of credentials when yeah. you need them you know what i'm saying yeah i mean like you might why don't they just get snooky Right, I mean, she right. goes to bars too. Right, she goes to parties. I mean, and that's actually the role I thought Amber Rose was gonna play. Like, she dresses like a slut. Maybe she'll get drunk and and fall down in one of the episodes. Yeah, man. It like was... that's that's kind of like what I was I was thinking that that was her role was she was Snooky. Right. I mean, it might as well have been Snooky right. to tell you the truth. Right. I mean, I, and I hate to be like that. I hate to be so like insensitive, I guess, and so so offensive to somebody I don't even know, but but. Uh, you know, I'm around this stuff, and I see this stuff, and I see, and I see how much work it takes. Yeah. And to say I go to parties, there's so. no, there's no, you know, it ain't no mystery. She's there because she's eye candy. Right. right. You know, she's she's uh, a celebrity, I guess, mm-hmm. and you know that's gonna bring in ratings. People are gonna tune in to see what Amber Rose is doing for whatever reason they're interested. I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but that's you know that's that's my take yeah. on the whole Amber Rose. Well, hopefully we're gonna see her in Playboy sometime soon. Now, uh, you know this dude's a legend. You know, from everybody's standpoint. Although, man, the, the, his credibility in this show, as a fan, um, I don't know, man. It's it's really it's really funny style. Kid Capri. How, how do you feel about Kid Capri? Kid Capri. Um, Kid Capri, like you said, he, he's a legend, you know, he's, he's paved the path for a lot of DJs, um, so in, in his own right, he's kind of like a living legend dude, um, I met him on the set, you know, many times, he's my dude, he's cool, he's, yeah. he's Kid Capri, he's the most legitimate of the judges on the show, um, he, he, he keeps it real the most, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, you know, obviously the show wants him to play the, the bad cop, right. you know, he, they, he, you know, he wants... He, they want him to be the Simon Cowell, like on American Idol, like, yeah. um, you know, the, the the arrogant, you know, the asshole, yeah, the asshole yeah, judge yeah, yeah. tells you like it is, and yeah. you know, I'm Kid Capri, what I say goes, you know, that shit, which is fine for the TV show, but like, yo, man, like, check the ego in at the end of the night, like when you punch out off the clock and you're not on the TV show. Leave the, that act and the ego shit yeah. on the show because it just makes you look like a fucking. Especially dick. when we all saw him get punched on YouTube and cry like a. You know. Well, we saw him cry about it. Uh, oh. Google that shit. You know. Let's see. Keep your breeze. That's my own opinion. Believe me, none of the none, none of my comments reflect what DJ Wicked thinks. I'm just saying. Right. Keep your breeze, my dude. Like he's 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 a real cat. You know. Right. I met him enough times. Like he's a real dude. Um, I'm just saying, like. I don't know, maybe the show is kind of portraying him poorly, making him act like an asshole on TV. I don't know. Uh, was he like that, though? When you, when he's you... always been cool and personable with me. Um, but all they show you on that show is, you know, Kid Capri, the bad cop, dickhead. Right. But you would think that eventually he would say, hey, man, this isn't me. You know, this isn't me. I don't. I don't want to be portrayed like that. Uh, I, I feel these dudes. I was these. I yeah. was. I was DJ Wicked at one point. Sure, I mean, and, and DJs, you know, DJs have egos, kind of like rappers. It's, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you be proud of right. who you are and what you do. Right. Um, but there is a, you know, to a degree, like, some of it has to be an act. You know what I'm saying? Of course. He, he's, he gets mad respect. I respect the dude. Yeah. You know, he's a pioneer. He's an OG. Um, but, you know, leave the shit on the show. You know what I'm saying? As a person, like respect people, like you want to be, you know, treat people how you want to be right, treated. Right, exactly, shit. exactly. Like exactly. I'm a man, dude. So like, you know, that TV show shit is all fine and dandy, dude. But mm -hmm. you know, treat a motherfucker with respect. Yeah. You know, period. Yeah. Right, because because you can get punched more than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he said it. All right, so the show's done. You go home, and you know, you you turn to BET at midnight. And you watch it yourself as a fan, right. if you can call yourself a fan. Um, what did you think of the overall production, the editing process, how it was put together, how the, how the show flowed? Shit. Honestly, man, I'm, I'm not a TV dude, but when I watch that show, even I can tell, man, that it's the production is fucking piss poor. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's choppy, kind of jumps all over the place, hard to follow. Um, it's just fucking garbage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I think everybody saw that. I think I think anybody who watches it well, the show's a half hour long. I mean, you got however many, what, ten DJs, eleven DJs, right. ten, ten, ten on your night. Right. And you're gonna fit them all into a half an hour show or even half of them into a half an hour show. It, it was almost like honestly, man, it felt like an infomercial to I me. Mean, it felt like a like yeah. a Smirnoff vodka. Information. And a lot of people, a lot of people are realizing that. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a 30 minute fucking vodka commercial. Right. You even drink vodka? I mean, dude, I don't, don't fucking drink alcohol. I've never, <laughs> I've never drank alcohol in my life. Um, so that's, yeah, the irony yeah. is, 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 yeah. is pretty fucking silly. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it, it's a, it's a vodka commercial. Um, right. it has little bits of DJing sprinkled here and there. I think you maybe saw six, seven seconds of yeah. my set. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it is what it is. Right. Everyone's everyone's you know been speaking up on that. Yeah. Well, and and the episode you were on, we saw this blind challenge. Right. Thing. Uh, it, it, tell us how you feel about that. 
I mean, the blind challenge, um, basically it was, you know, they put a fucking screen in front of you. You can't see the crowd and the crowd can't see you. Right. And you're supposed to, you know, rock a party. Um, so, you know, they came to us in the middle of the night, the night before, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, gave me a fuck, you know, a thumb drive. <laughs> his thumb drive. <laughs> okay, Wicked, uh, these are your 10 songs you're going to rock yeah. the crowd with. And I'm just like, what the fuck yeah. is, th what is that? Like, I play records, are you kidding me? A yeah. thumb drive? Yeah. Um, so, and then on the thumb drive, you have, you know, a country western song, a couple house music songs, uh, slow R&B track. Um, just a bunch of garbage that you would never even shit fucking play. That no one would play it. Right, in a right, minute. right. Set. Even Amber Rose wouldn't yeah. dance to that shit. Which is exactly, <laughs> which is you know, it's a challenge. It's designed to be right. Tough. Of course, of course. Um, you know, it's a stupid challenge in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it just brings me back to that whole thing of like, if you go onto this show thinking you're gonna do you and play your joints mm -hmm. that you know rock mm -hmm. the crowd and and in your style and shit. Um, that's, that's not an option. You're doing their version of you, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. always going to be whack. Right. You know? Right. Did you even know? I mean, did they say, oh, and by the way, uh, brush up on your Serato? Because although we know you don't right. use Serato. Um, no, nah, it's almost like they don't even, the producers and, and crew don't really even understand or comprehend mm -hmm. the whole Serato versus wax thing. I mean, right. there's a reason... They call me a vinyl purist, mm -hmm. you know, hence purist, because I purely right. play records, right. real records, you know. Um, so, you know, coming at me and not, you know, denying me that, I didn't have an option. I couldn't use records. Mm -hmm. It was just out. Mm -hmm. Well, I would never do that. I don't play Serato. Right. So, right. you know, just, you know, you want to make a fair playing field, you know, just let everyone do whatever they do, however yeah, they Yeah, make it a competition. I right. Mean, so, compete against each other. Don't, exactly. Yeah, yeah, don't compete against what they make you. Right. So, anyway, yeah, it's disappointing. More so disappointing that the, the production crew doesn't understand. They don't, mm -hmm. it's like they don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's super frustrating. I, I can imagine. Yeah. So, it wasn't necessarily the song selection that, that really threw you off. It was more Serato. I mean, I say that because I know, I know you... you uh, I've seen you be diverse. I, I know you have the Got Milk mix CD. Right. right. Uh, I've seen you rock parties, yeah, playing I mean, stuff that wasn't. Yeah. The 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 music portion of the challenge was was nothing. I mean, I'll make anything sound good. You know, I'll yeah. make anything sound good. Yeah. Period. Um. But it's yeah, it's the medium, the format. Like, they call me a vinyl purist because I play purely vinyl. So, uh, you know, expecting me to use Serato or forcing me to use Serato, not giving me another option, mm -hmm. um, didn't really create a, a fair playing field. Yeah, um, right. You know, I've uh, I've used Serato twice in my life, okay? Right. The first time I used it was for the People's Champ competition, which was an online video where I had to download seven Just Blaze instrumentals mm -hmm. and mix them together, again, forced to use it. Right, I didn't right. have an option. They, they right. were like, you have to, you know, do the People's Champ contest. You have to use Serato to download the song. So, um, you know, I bought a computer, a fucking MacBook Pro, so it would run Serato. Mm -hmm. That night, I knocked the video out, um, and that was now. That's been four months ago. Um, okay, so that was the first time. The next time I used it was in the Blind Challenge mm. on the TV show. Um, so and that was the first time I ever used it in a public setting, yeah. in front of a crowd, in front of you know cameras and, and lights and shit. So yeah, I've used it twice. Yeah, yeah, but right. I mean, are you necessarily anti Serato? I mean, I've I've, I've seen you play with people that use Serato. Yeah, it's not, like you. Yeah. I mean, nah, I mean, I'm not one of those you know fuck Serato. You know, not ignorant like that. Like obviously there's dope um, advantages and then there's disadvantages. You know, mm -hmm. that's positives and negatives. Um, but I'm not one of those anti-Serato dudes. I, I mean, anyone would agree, man, that the technology behind Serato right. and the whole digital, right. um, you know, DJing software is it's incredible. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not me. It's not what I do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, it's not what I prefer to spin with. Can you ever see yourself maybe adding it to your repertoire, adding it, adding it, you know, to your arsenal? Um, as needed. Right. As needed. When I get to the point. Where I feel like, you know, 
I can't DJ anymore unless I go right. the Serato route. Right. And yeah, you know, you know, you're not I'll, quit I'll look DJing into that. Because, right, I'll right. look into that option. Um, but for now, it's like I do vinyl, and I can hang with who, whatever format you use. Yeah, I can hang with just my records. I'm good. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, that's my, you know, records are my passion. It's more than just preference of what I like to play. It's a, it's a lifestyle part of DJ culture. You know. Yeah. So, um, I'm, a, you know, I'm a vinyl purist. It's plain and simple. Like forcing me or persuading me or bamboozling me into yeah. having to use Serato. That's not right, you know. Right. But again, it brings you back to if you think you go get to go on the show and do what you do, no, you don't. Right. You're wrong. You do what they want you to do. Yeah. You, know, you do their version of you. Yeah. It was almost backwards to me, like like knowing several DJs. Uh, it seems like uh, you shouldn't only know Serato. I mean, it, it seemed backwards. Like you, sh everyone should be able to play off records. Everybody should be able to use vinyl. Yeah, because that's if, the foundation. If, yeah, if if Serato is, is is more convenient for you, of course. But you know, every DJ I know has a collection of records. Right. I mean, granted, most of the DJs I know have been DJing for 20 years. But yeah, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it just comes down to use whatever you want. Just rock the party. Yeah. Like, rock yeah. it. Use Serato, fine. You want to use iPod, fine. You want to use records, fine. Um, you know, fuck whatever the, the medium, the format is, just rock the right. party how you rock the party. Yeah, yeah. And I rock the party with records. Yeah, so. right, and you know, um, that that's kind of your pull that I see people, when you when you break something out on record, people haven't heard, it's like, he has that on record? I yeah. mean, anybody can download any song from iTunes. Sure. But that's part of the fun of, of, of going to a Wicked show right. is that he actually has this on record. Right. Like like I mentioned before, um, everything DJ Wicked is like built upon, you know, the, the little empire built around who I am and what I do as a DJ is all surrounding records mm -hmm. and wax. Mm -hmm. Like you right. go to a, you go to a see DJ Wicked rock with records. Right. That's right. why you, you know, that's part of why you go to see right. what I do. So being denied, again, the option on the show to do what I do, it's a little fucked up. It's a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. You think that Especially kind of understand. the first thing you do. I mean, okay, maybe maybe uh, at first you get to do what you do, and then they throw hard, they throw more challenges in. That would have seemed a little a, a little more plausible or yeah. understandable. Uh, but but for for the for the viewer to never see what you do, that that did seem kind of shady. Yeah, it's a little. To say the very least, it's a little little unjust. Right. You know, I think right. everyone would agree. Yeah, definitely. Um, I gotta admit something real quick, man. I got a confession to make. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad you got kicked off that shit as soon as you did, man. Who was it? <laughs> because I was so fucking sick of watching that shit. Like, it's like, man, I only watched it because you know my boys are there, but uh, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch, man. And I was I really, feel that. I was really, really. I mean, I want to say I was happy. See you go. I feel that <laughs> and to some degree, bro, I was fucking glad to go. You know, like how much do you subject yourself to as a fucking man? You know yeah, yeah, saying? right, like, right. How much do you put right. up with before you Absolutely. slap the shit right. out of someone? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, part of it was actually a fucking relief. It's like after a while I figured out, okay, I've never been a part of TV, but now that I see the behind the scenes shit of what what really goes down and mm -hmm. how you're treated mm -hmm. and and how things uh, are designed. Um, yeah, man, to, to some degree, it was like a breath, you know, blessing in disguise. Get right. the fuck out right. of here. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't fit the mold anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't fuck with yeah. these, like, little Hollywood. Yeah. So yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. I didn't fit the role. Right. Like, right. I'm surprised I wasn't the first to go. So, you know? I mean, this might be a, just a, a silly question, but looking back, would you do it again? What are you going to do today? Uh... Fuck no. <laughs> I would not do it again. Um, am I glad I did it? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I did it. Right. It was a, right. you know, it was nothing but a learning experience. Yeah. So when they call you back to be a judge next year, <laughs> they ain't you fucking calling me back, dude. They ain't calling me back. Um, Good, because I don't yeah, watch man, shit again. Uh, I wouldn't do it again. I'm glad I did it, but I wouldn't do it again. I know right, that sounds right. weird. Yeah, no, um, no. I but that's, that's real shit. Like, yeah, you know, I met some dope DJs. I met some good people. Um, 
I met some fucking assholes. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like, yeah, how much do you subject yourself to? You know, I can roll with the punches and go with the flow and play their little game to a degree, but, you know, I'm not someone you can just, you know, treat like your bitch. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not me. Um, it's right. not going to happen. So, you know, for all these dudes that are kind of in the green and kind of naive and, oh, I can't wait to try out for season three, you know, those dudes, it's like, I feel bad for them in a way, yeah. you know. I'm not going to sit here and say, don't audition for season three, you know. That's not my call anyway, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to say this, like, if you do go to audition for season three, brush up your fucking image game, you know. Yeah, your yeah. Act. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, it ain't about DJ. Obviously. It is not about DJ. Yeah. Not about it. So, yeah. yeah, brush up your, your, you know, be prepared to make a spectacle of yourself. You'll last longer on the show. Mm. If you act like a jackass, people mm. will keep tuning in to see what the fuck you're going to do next. Yeah. But for people like me, I don't feed into that. I don't. I won't play the game. I won't be the person they want me to mm -hmm. be. So they're going to get rid of me as quick as they can. So you, you don't have any gold shorts? I don't have any gold <laughs> shorts. Um, I don't have a whip. No. So, so what's next then? I mean, that's Master of the Mix is over. Yeah. You know, so we think, right? I mean, for you, uh, what's next? Um, well, I can't even really speak on it right now. Um, I've been working on something for the last few months. It's going to be, I'll just put it like this. It's going to be the, the biggest power move mm -hmm. I've done in my DJ career. I'm trying to solidify right now. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as it's unlocked. I'll announce what that is, but I got something real, real exciting and special planned in the works right now. Really? It's like almost really? there. It's not. It's, it's not quite there. I'm gonna, you know, right. I'll announce it when the time is right. Man, I think we can't wait to hear. It. There's more to DJ Wicked. There's more people behind DJ Wicked than yeah. than, than people get to see. That's is there anybody true. that you wanna that you wanna shout out before we go? Uh, shout outs. I mean, you know, all the people know who they are. You know what I'm saying? My friends. My family, uh, fans, like loved ones, people that got my back. They all know who they are. There's so many to mention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like Team Wicked. That's the movement. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that do stuff, man. Help me out um, and, and, and make that Team Wicked machine happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, shouts out to, to all those people, man. Like, it's been a six month journey from this Master of the Mix shit from back in June till uh, present day. And uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and fucking tears invested in this shit. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, came to bat for me and, and helped me through that right. process. Um, so, yeah, I, I couldn't have done that shit on my own. No way. Um, and then, yeah, man, shout out to all the people online that are fucking clueless mm. to how a show like this right. Right. runs. You know, how, you know, but the, everyone got an opinion. Everyone got something to say. Online, you can say some shit to me, you get right. a fucking slap. Right, right. Um, but online, everyone's got an opinion. Um, a lot of people, you know, auditioned <laughs> for this show. Right. And didn't right. make it. They didn't have what it took. Like, they couldn't yeah. make the cut. They didn't make it on the show, so now they're angry and they don't yeah. like DJ Wicked. You right, know, right. fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, so, shouts out to all those ignorant ass fucks on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta just sit back and chuckle because they have no fucking right, clue, man. Right. It's, 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 is pretty uh, hilarious. Right. Uh, so shouts out to all those fucking douchebags, and uh, you know, most of the production, most of the people behind the scenes at Master of the Mix, you know, fuck you. <laughs> uh, you know, you got a select few cats that are like yeah. keeping it real over there. The rest, fuck you for real. Um, the contestants, the other cast members that were subject to all the same little petty bullshit that I was, man. Some good people. Um, mess with, <laughs> some good DJs, a couple of you, you know, didn't deserve to be there, man. You should be really grateful for that shit. Um, a couple of you were fucking beasts, um, and, and should have won that shit, or maybe you will win it. Um, but shouts out to all those cats for being, just, like, putting themselves out there and stepping mm -hmm. up, man, and, and, uh, being subject, you know, to, to all the little belittling, humiliating bullshit that no one should have to like you know put up with i got some questions from some fans online do you care if we uh address those real quick yeah that's okay so um trent berry asks 
if you could pick one moment in your entire career as the most memorable, what would it be? That's a lot of moments, man. Uh, I mean, we're talking 20 years. Um, I don't know. Probably some of the bigger ones was like rocking, uh, rocking a show with Grandmaster Flash. Mm. Um, you know, it's not not everyone can say they they share the stage with with a legend like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, man, I, I mean, I've, I've done so many things with so many different people. Pete Rock and Mixmaster Mike, Scratch Pickles and Q-Bird and you know, you know, the list goes on, but um, Grandmaster Flash to me, man, that's just kind of like, you know, he, when you think of hip hop DJing, like Grandmaster Flash is like, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. that's the, 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 the textbook go-to guy, man. Um, so yeah, that was, that was uh, probably one of the, one of the cooler, you know, personally, like one of the cooler moments of my, my DJ career. Cool. Uh, Shannon Thomason wants to know what important lesson or technique do you think you passed on to the other DJs on Master of the Mix? Uh, well, it wasn't like I was around uh, for a long time to teach all these different techniques. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, man, if, if nothing else, hopefully uh, I taught them like how to be, like how to have integrity. Mm. And like stand up for yourself and, and and speak on some shit when you're being bamboozled. Um, you know, it's, I know it's not a technical skill set, but you know that's some that's some real shit. Mm. You know, so hopefully you know hopefully they pick up on that. Yeah, I would like to see some some of those DJs, you know, express express how they really feel. Yeah, yeah, there's something to be said about you know what I mean. Crawling under a rock and hiding, mm. or being a stand up person and, and speaking your mind and speaking your piece. Right. Uh, one more from DJ Bamboo. He says, do you think Master of the Mix has completely insulted the DJ culture? I personally think it has, and all these kids at home are completely misguided. We're gonna raise a generation of wusses and posers because these show producers lack knowledge themselves. Uh, yeah, I mean, to some degree, he has a great point. Um, there's a lot of, you know, naive, younger kids at home um, that don't know anything about DJing. Uh, they might tune in and catch Master of the Mix, mm. um, and and that's a that's a really poor first impression on DJing. Um, it's so far from reality; mm -hmm. there aren't even words to explain. Um, but yeah, if you know, the last thing I'm gonna do um, if I had a kid and they were gonna tune in and they want to know about <laughs> DJing. Like the last thing I'm gonna do is put that yeah. off on first and be yeah. like, hey, here, learn, learn something, because yeah. that it, it's not reality. The bottom right. line. Right. All right, man. I got a question of my own. When this is all done, whoever wins this this competition, would you be willing to battle them? No, no TV bullshit, no no gimmicks, no editing, no fucking around. Are you down uh, to battle whoever yeah. wins this shit? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who wins this whole thing. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Hip hop is battling. It's, it's one and the same. Like um, whoever wins this thing, it doesn't even matter. Like if they want to battle, let's do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Sign me up. Cool. You know, put some money on it. You know, some a real DJ battle. No Hollywood shenanigans. Mm -hmm. You know, just a one on one, yeah. straight up real DJ battle. Yeah. Let's fucking get it in for real. You heard it. Well, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for answering these questions. Yeah, I know, yeah, man. man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, fuck. Check me out on Facebook. You know, facebook.com backslash D E E J A Y wicked. Um, or on Twitter. Um, shit. Anyway. Justplainterror.com. Yeah. Don't check me out on Facebook because I'll reject your friend request. Exactly. <laughs> this is what fuck it is. you.